Hey Brady, I am Matt Henderson. I like making mathematical animations and I wanted to show a few that relate to the patterns of orbits in the solar system. The first one is the inner planets. And so this is the approximate pattern that the inner planets trace out. Obviously things aren't to scale, but we've got the sun, uh, we've got Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars going around in their approximate orbits and relative speeds. So they're spinning around, the sun is at the center and now we're gonna actually move so we're following Earth. And we're interested in what are the patterns that are traced out by the other planets from kind of like from the perspective of Earth, we start to see some interesting patterns. The pattern from Venus is starting to be quite regular. We'll start to see this kind of five pointed shape. You can see we've got one of the points here, you've got two, three, and the next time Venus comes around, it completes this five points. One, two, three, four, five. And that's because the ratio of the orbits between Venus and Earth are, uh, is in an 8 to 13 ratio. So the difference there is accounting for the five-fold symmetry. In general, it's just like a pretty pattern. I think these are called epicycloids. They're kind of like the spirograph patterns that you get on rolling circles around circles. And those just happen to be the ones that the planets trace out. Now let's look at this asteroid, Crenia, that has been referred to as Earth's second moon, but that's just sensationalist kind of thing. Um, it is, what it is is an asteroid that's in orbital resonance with the Earth, um, which mean, in this case it means that its year is the same as Earth's year, but it's not orbiting Earth, it's also orbiting the Sun, but in a more kind of elliptical orbit. So if we mistakenly thought it was orbiting, orbiting the Earth, then what would its orbit look like? It wouldn't be a circle, it'd be some kind of mix of circles and ellipses or something. So, so let's see. So again, we start out with the sun at the center. Earth is orbiting, and then this is Crenia, this little asteroid that is orbiting with the same year. And now we've shifted to the perspective of the Earth and the path that Crenia is tracing out is this kind of uh, kidney bean shape. Again, this, these aren't the exact correct orbits, but it's roughly kind of like what's going on. So we don't see an elliptical orbit. If we were wrong and we thought Earth was the center of the solar system, then Crenia would be the sort of weird second moon, tiny asteroid guy that is orbiting us in this kind of kidney bean shape. That would take some explaining if you believe that, that Earth was at the center of everything. Yeah, that's a kind of complicated behavior to explain. <laughs> but I suppose it's just built up of a circle and, a, and an ellipse kind of added together. So maybe as soon as you saw that, you might invent that explanation. You put these on Twitter, but what have you done in the past? Yeah, I used to run this uh, blog on Tumblr that, uh, where I posted mathematical GIFs. Um, back then, um, I don't think they were quite as good as my new ones. I think they've sort of progressed a little bit. Um, so for example, you know, this was the new uh, Carina animation. This is the old one here. It's explaining the same shape, but it takes a little bit longer to see exactly what's happening, possibly because you don't have that shift in perspective, you know, where you establish the orbits with the sun at the center, and then you shift to this following Earth because Earth is stationary. You can kind of see what's going on, right? The sun's stationary too in that one. Yeah, the sun is stationary as well. So if we look at the new one, the sun is also still stationary, right? Yeah. But the fact that the sun is at the center of the old one is maybe a bit confusing as well. Here I've just put Earth as the center to emphasize that we're doing a sort of geocentric thing. In both I've done the trick of having like stars in the background, which are just randomly generated points. 
but the stars that are sort of swinging around, I think, helps to show you're in a sort of weird reference frame that's rotating with the Earth. And, and you've got another old one too from there. Yeah, related to this ratio of Venus and the Earth, got this one here, which is you have Venus going around, you've got Earth going around, and you just draw a line between the two. So it's a bit different to tracing the relative path, but you get a similar shape. You get that five-pointed shape that I pointed out before. It's fun stuff, all these planets, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, for me, it's kind of just a way to talk about um, the, the spirograph patterns, the epicycloids um, that you get from circles rotating around. Um, it's just kind of fun to plug in the numbers that roughly correspond to like Venus and Earth, for example. And of course, it's not exactly 8 to 13 ratio, but it gives the five-pointed symmetry because 8 plus 5 is 13. Today's episode has been brought to you by Brilliant. Now we often focus on all their great math courses, like these ones. But it seems appropriate today to let you know they happen to have this epic course on gravitational physics. As you can see it's jam packed with stuff relating to today's video. But going much much deeper of course. Brilliant is fun, it's engaging, it's educational of course. But most importantly, it's really interactive. Why not visit today and see what a great resource they've created? Maybe sign up if it's for you, or give a subscription as a gift to that person who already has everything. There's 20% off a premium subscription by going to brilliant.org slash number file, the address on the screen. Thanks Brilliant for supporting today's episode.